Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Transfer Talks here on the Cycling Dane YouTube channel. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Craig himself, Ewan Wilson, and this is, of course, our series where we discuss the latest transfers. And I mean, we don't have any confirmations because it's not the 1st of August, but uh, very closest to our confirmation, I guess. But yeah, Ewan, there's plenty of things to talk about. We've got sprinters, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the big one we're going to start on, we've talked about it on the Echelon Cycling Podcast, Remco Venepol looks like he might not be staying with Sural Quickstep after all. Yeah, rifts are definitely appearing in the team Remco Avenepol camp uh, between both his own staff, which seems to be a whole entourage, and Sudal Quickstep themselves. I mean, we covered this last year a little bit with uh, the rumor to Ineos. It seemed like a really thin-scented rumor at the time, and it's been building and building with time on the Echelon Cycling Podcast as well. We, we've been tracking this story throughout the year, but the sort of the big revelation has come in the past two weeks during the Tour de France. Remco Avenepol's team appears to be unhappy at Sudal Quickstep, especially with their um, with, with the staff and, and the way that they are preparing and bolstering the team in order to accomplish Remco's big objectives, which includes winning the Tour de France in 2024. This uh, has definitely sort of caused some rifts in the squad, uh, despite Patrick Lefebvre and Remco Avenepol seeming sort of brothership, which they have bonded throughout the year. After liege baston liege this year, Remco Avenepol said that this team was a family, wanted to stay in for as long as Patrick Lefebvre wanted him there. However, at the moment... There are fault lines in this relationship. This has opened up a number of other avenues for Remco Avenepol if they can afford to get him out of this contract at this point in his contract, given that he still has a number of seasons left to his name at Sudal Quickstep. The links include Israel Premiatek, which actually appears to be quite a legitimate and strong link, uh, given that there are close ties between Avenepol's own, own team including his manager and agent and so forth, and the staff over Israel Premier Tech. That seems to be one option that could open up. Elsewhere, there's a, a sort of a weaker link with Lidl Trek and Bora Hansgrohe. There's also Ineos Grenadiers that appear to be on the table. Um, Patrick Lefebvre said that Jim Ratcliffe can't buy the world, but it seems like they could be able to buy Rimko Avenepoel out of a contract to suit our quick step, it seems. So with all of that factored in, it's looking more and more likely that Remco Avenepol could be leaving Sudal Quickstep sooner than we had imagined. Yeah, quite interesting, isn't it? Uh, where, like, world champion at the start of the year, it seemed like everything was going great. The Giro, they were on track for trying to win that. And I mean, you and out of those options, obviously Israel Premier Tech are pro-continental. That's the first red flag in there. In your screen, I mean, if it's the team structure he's looking towards, in your screen, it fits the bill. Needle Trek are strengthening as well. But I mean, there's some other, well, transfers as well linked with Quickstep. And do you think this is to try and help Remco? I mean, they have sacrificed largely their classics team mm -hmm. to try and build around Remco here. Well, let's just talk, talk about Sudal and home in on them. Lefebvre has sort of had his eyes on a couple of key climbers. George Bennett, who's out of contract, seems to really be on his radar, as is Michael Storer, the Australian who currently writes for Groupama, uh, who's also looking to make a move next season. Two really legitimate targets that could suit Sudal Quickstep very well in supporting Remco Avenable at those Grand Tour objectives, particularly George Bennett, who uh, rode a brilliant first week of the Tour de France back in 2022 before having to pull out. He also rode with Roglic and so forth whilst he was at Lotto Jumbo, stroke Jumbo Visma beforehand. Um, so the team is definitely looking like it's building up. They're also saying farewell to a number of, uh, sort of classics guys and, and, and sprinters. We spoke about Fabio Jakobsen, but there's also rumors about uh, more riders going out the door, including Davide Ballerini, um, who looks to be parting ways with the project next year. Bajoli as well could be moving on. There's also more, more talks about other riders leaving. Mattia Catania actually is still staying with the squad. He was on the Giro team with, with Avenepoel. So Sudal definitely are focusing on Remco. So the critique of the team not having enough support there, I mean, maybe it's short-sighted given that Lefebvre is trying to bring more people in. Now addressing the, the, the second part of that question about which other teams seem to be legitimate here, Ineos 100% makes sense. You can almost close your eyes and imagine Remco Avenepoel riding in that sort of the red and blue of Ineos Grenadiers. That, it just seems like it makes sense. He's a great time trialist and a, and a great climber. 
He's that sort of typical paint by numbers in your scrand tour leader. Um, the team, I mean, we've spoken about it. Ineos Grenadiers are weakening. They're losing riders, a lot of key riders, but at the same time, they still have a really good Grand Tour setup. We've seen that even at the GDR this year, at the Tour de France as well. They're still a really strong team despite losing riders like it's a sinking ship almost. So for me, Ineos looks to be the sort of the best option for his career and his objectives. Israel Premitek, given how close the team are with him, that could sway things personally. Yeah, uh, we'll wait and see what unfolds here. But I mean, yeah, as you said, they're missing that big Galactico. Uh, Ineos Grenadiers after Egan Bernal's tragic crash last year has kind of not left him as the same rider. But so, I mean, you and this exodus isn't limited to Remco Venerpol, one of their former world champions two times, uh, Junior Philippe. Obviously, he didn't have a great Tour de France this year. Not really the same rider as 2019, etc. But Alaphilippe, where is he linked to leaving the squad potentially? Well, that's the big question. Ella Philippe seeming to be stalling at Sudal Quick Step. That relationship between him and Lefebvre has been turning sour over the past 12 months. And the French newspaper West France did report that Total Energy has contacted uh, Julien Ella Philippe. In this sort of phone call contact that we had, apparently it was between Ala Philippe as agent and, and 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 the team leader of of Total. They said that Ala Philippe was in a contract until 2024, and he wasn't looking to break that contract uh, this year to move over to Total. Also, Jean René Borgodeau himself said that he didn't really want to do the talking with Patrick Lefevre. I mean, which probably says says a lot given all, all we've discussed in the past five minutes of this video. Um, so Ala Philippe. Maybe not Total Energy this year, but they've already established contact this year. And Bogado says that Alaphilippe is a key, key target for that squad, especially going forward. Nevertheless, we might as well move on to UAE Team Emirates. I mean, Tarbigaccia, a yeah, very strong team at this year's Tour de France. Obviously, they want to be omnipresent on every single Grand Tour as well, like Jumbo Visma, and be competing for podiums, etc. But... Yeah, you and what's the story here? The riders coming in and out of the Middle Eastern squad. Well, there are some key moves here for strengthening Teddy Pogacar's squad potentially for Grand Tours next year. Looking towards what I think is a real grabbing transfer here, Pavel Sivakov of France uh, moving over to UAE. This transfer rumor came before the Tour de France, courtesy of both Daniel Benson at GCN Racing and also from Chiros Con Emilio over at Cateta de los Sports. Two really reliable sources on transfers. And, I mean, he fits into that mold very well at UAE. I think we sort of realize now at Ineos that he's not going to be cracking the top five at a Grand Tour anytime soon. But he's a brilliant domestique in the mountains. And that perfectly fits the mold of a UAE Jumbo Visma style train through the mountains. So for this one, Sivakov looks like a perfect match with the team. Also looking at riders coming in, that would include Nils Pollitt, currently contracted with Bora Hansgrohe. There are a couple teams trying to fight for him, but it looks like UAE are the strongest lead right now. Pollitt would be a valuable, valuable asset, whilst Jumbo have the likes of Natan van Hoydonk and Dylan van Bala. Nils Pollitt could slot into that role at UAE. We saw how well he was climbing in that final week of the Tour de France. It was a good sign of things to come. And... Polyp should should be a, a, a sort of nail on for a Tour de France setup next year. Also looking elsewhere, the under-23 world champion in 2021, Filippo Baroncini, looks like he's moving across from Lidl Trek to UAE as well. Whilst UAE are also losing some big riders, George Bennett, as we said, looks like he might be moving elsewhere. Also looking at uh, Davide Formolo, strong sort of component of Tade Pogacar's 2020 and 21 seasons. He looks like he's heading across to Movistar, almost looking like a done deal at the moment, according to Daniel Benson at GCN Racing. Well, you and we might as well, you mentioned it there, Lidl Trek. Obviously, they've got an injection of money courtesy of Lidl. But uh, yeah, it seems like one of the transfers that we talked about well, in the first transfer talks this year, Theo Gegenhardt is looking a lot more certain. But what other riders, as well as that, is kind of looking a lot more, well, looking like they're going to bring them in? Well, a low-cost supermarket with a big budget in the pro peloton, it seems. Theo Gegenhardt definitely now looking like a, quote, done deal, according to Chiros Con Emilio 
over at Gazzetta dello Sport. Elsewhere, I mean, Milan, as we spoke about before, he's going to be anchoring their sprinting team alongside Mas Payson, who's currently at the squad. But they're also bringing in other Italian talent. It looks like Fabio Fellina is going to be making his way across to the squad as well. Simone Consonni, Andrea Bagioli, two other really, really strong Italian talents. Bagioli in particular has a puncher, sort of climber figure. Uh, he was snubbed this year's Tour de France setup, but could really sort of hit the ground running at Lidl Trek. Elsewhere, Sam Oman of the Netherlands looks like he'll be moving across. Uh, that was covered by Vila Flitz earlier this year. And as I mentioned earlier on in the Sudal Quick Step chunk, looks like David Ballerini, Omla Pen Newsblad winner in the past, will be moving across to Lidl Trek. But he also has a rumor, we believe, linked to to the pro cycling. And I mean, you and uh, well, we're, we've had a bit of a sprinter's market this year with uh, so many big names rumored here, there, and everywhere. Fabio Jakobsen, we talked about him being linked to Bora Hansgrohe, and immediately the day when we're released, it seems like now he's going to be leaving for DSM. Caleb Ewan as well, there's a few question marks about, so, and even Pascal Ackerman. So, yeah, can you elaborate on that with Sam Bennett? Yeah, like, I've just thrown all these names in. That's how this market is right now. It's it's like a whole buffet right now, a smorgasbord of talent in the sprinting field that all once wants change. And who's going to be up there with their plate to the buffet to scoop up Sam Bennett first? Um, and I'll cover that one first since I mentioned his name, Sam Bennett, after his disappointing Tour de France snub this year at Bora Hansgrohe. Looks like he's going to be going to a new team next year. Human powered health seem to be leading the charge. On that one, the pro-Constantal American squad, really exciting pro-Constantal American squad, who've made a big step up over the past two years. Then looking across to Gino D'Italia stage winner, Pascal Ackerman, currently contracted with UAE, but he looks like he might be moving across to Israel Premier Tech, according to Villa Flitz, our sources over there. Giacomo Nitsola as well, currently at Israel Premier Tech, looks like he could be moving over to Q36.5. The new Doug Ryder project, the Quebec team, as you might have known it in the past. Also looking towards Alberto Dainese, took a GDOS stage win this year and last year. He looks like he could be moving across to two to pro cycling. I mean, yeah, and you forgot one, Caleb Ewan. Almost funny, that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it says a lot, but it's also because we don't have a lead on where he's going next. It's more about him looking like he's leaving Lotto Destiny. There was quite a sour sort of divorce really uh public divorce during the 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 tour de france between the squads killer buen actually has an extra year in his contract at lotto destiny for next year um but they made it public that they can cut ties at the end of this year so it's looking like killer buen is going to be leaving not on good terms with, with lotto destiny where he's off to next i guess we we, we could discuss that where, where could possibly Welcome him with open arms. Yeah, I mean, that all depends again where everyone else is going to end up. It's it's a real merry-go-round this year. So anyway, Ewan, uh, obviously Ineos Grandes, we're all fascinated by them. And it looks like the Carlos Rodriguez saga that we've talked about over on the Echelon Cycling Podcast has another chapter. Obviously, he's finished fifth in the Tour de France and won a stage. So obviously, has that changed the circumstances now? It's looking like it could have changed the circumstances. We have been reporting for about one year now about this Rodriguez move to Movistar. It's been brewing and brewing and brewing, and um, we, and we were led to believe that they could be signing a contract on the second rest day of the tour. That, I don't know if it has really materialized, because it looks like Ineos have a stronger case to sort of keep Rodriguez for next year. Both Ineos and Movistar are now offering four-year contracts, that would take him into the year 2027. Would that be four? Math is not my strong point. That's a pretty long contract net nowadays for one of these riders. And it looks like Rodriguez could still have a future in Ineos Grenadiers. The Movistar deal is still on the table. That's been on the table for a long, long time. But Ineos definitely looking stronger in their fight for, for the for the Spaniard. Uh, well, anyways, Ewan, before we go... Um... Do you just want to roll off some of your lesser transfers as well? No offense to these riders, of course. <laughs> um, you didn't but, make the cut. 
Exactly. Well, uh, Tour de France stage winner this year from Lyon, France. Victor Lafay looks like he could be parting ways with Cofidis next year. There was a rumor sort of brewing at the beginning of the Tour de France that apparently has been there for a while about Ineos Grenadiers for next year. Finally, an incoming transfer for them. But for Lafay, there are also a number of other teams involved. Haven't quite been named, but it's looking pretty good at the moment for Victor to have an option for next year. At Movistar, they are bringing in Formula, as I mentioned, but also it's looking like Remy Cavagna could be joining that squad next year over from Sudal Quickstep. Looking towards Sudan once again, Mauro Schmidt looks to be leaving to head over to Jaco Al Ula next year. That looks to be a pretty solid done deal. Uh, Matteo Sobrero, currently of Jaco Al Ula, looks like he's heading across to Bora Hansgrohe. Either selling, we don't know where he's going, but he will be going to somewhere different next year. And just a young rider I really want to flag up, um, Darren Rafferty of uh, County Tyrone in the north of Ireland. Uh, looks like he is heading across to EF Easy Post. Well, actually, it's already announced because he's one of these junior signings and he has got a super, super bright future. Recently won the Valle d'Osta junior stage race. So anyways, that's it for our third episode of Transfer Talks. And of course, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and why not check out our two previous episodes as well in this series. But that's it for us and we will see you around.